it's Nikki. Welcome back to Ranting with Ricardo. I'm trying to get this out to y'all quick, fast, in a hurry because I want to go to bed, okay? I want to go to bed. My sleeping schedule has been off and child, love of hip hop, Atlanta, how it ended pissed me off, okay? But we don't get into that. Again, it's Nikki. Welcome back to Ranting with Ricardo. If you like the video and you like the content on the channel, please like, comment, subscribe, turn your post notifications on, and share me with your people because you like me, they may like me too. Also, if you don't like any of this content and you don't like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and, you know, turn your post notifications on and share me with your people because you may not like me, but somebody out there does. Now, if you want to get in touch with me to either follow me on the social medias, yes, I said social medias because I'm on multiple platforms. You want to get in touch with me for some business, um, want to buy from Flawless Deception, which is my lip gloss, I'll go buy that, okay? Mm-hmm or you're in the Kansas City area currently and you need some pictures taken or you're trying to do a photo shoot, hit me up. All that is in the description box below. We are back for another Love & Hip Hop Atlanta Season 10 Episode 5 Recap Review because it's my channel and I can do what I want, so let's get into it. Now, I told y'all how I do these reviews is I try to take it person by person unless all these people are intertwined, okay? And they weren't really intertwined in the, you know, this whole thing. So looking at my notes, they start the show off showing um, most of the cast uh, looking at the verdict of George Floyd's murderer. You know that man. I not saying that man's name on this channel. That means I have to give light to him. And I don't respect that man whatsoever. But the cast is watching as, you know, they're handing down the ruling of his conviction. And then, you know, how much time he got on uh, his sentence for murdering George Floyd. And, you know, everybody's happy and everybody's crying and they're rejoicing. And some people feel like, well, this was a great step. And finally, the people that we have lost are getting justice. It was still not enough. I felt like it wasn't enough. But, you know, we still gonna keep fighting and pushing forward. Um, and then they take a little trip down memory lane for a little bit and they show us the different uh, black men, women, black men and women and children that we have lost to um, police brutality or racist people. And it is hard to continue to live through this stuff because we are still living through this stuff, but it's hard to go like have to watch it over again and then you know those emotions that you felt in the moment when all that stuff was happening when it first kicked off now you're feeling it again it's hard okay um so taking it person by person Kirk is back from New York and him and Rashida go to see Press 2.0. Rashida wanted to show him that you know she halfway done with the store they halfway done so they this close to get the tags on the stuff so people come buy it and pop the tags off the stuff i was like yeah and kirk's not really that impressed because he's like him this is not finished and we need to get this open before we they shut this motherfucker down again so we can start making money okay so this place can pay for itself and i was like kirk you ain't if i don't agree with you on nothing else you ain't never lied like my lip gloss and all that stuff is like I'm really trying to sell this, okay? It has to pay for itself so I can make my money back on like the time and all the money I spent and just everything I put into it. I need to be able to sell this lip gloss so I can make the money back. And then I can also have more money to put back into the lip gloss business. So I get it. Um, they talk about Christopher and how, you know, he's doing good and they want him to continue to do good. And eventually they want to get all the family together. Yay! They also talk about Rashida's sister um, and her family and trying to get that straight and back into order and get everybody to connect with one another. And Kirk says, so they could be asking us for money. I was like, oh, okay. Okay. So eventually later like later in the episode Rashida's sister's sis, sister Booby and her two daughters come and then Miss Charlene come for like a little barbecue cookout family get together or whatever at the Frost House. Also, uh while Kirk was in New York, Rashida held down the Frost Bistro, you know, the bistro's doing good, the kids are doing good. Hallelujah. If anybody got time for you batches to be fighting up in a restaurant again, making us all look bad. Okay giving us low ratings on yelp and google but you know the family comes over and they start talking 
about like just the different things. Did I mention Miss Charlene was there? Okay, I said Miss Charlene was there. I hope I did. Anyway, they're talking about the different things, and it's really like a whole bunch of miscommunication and a lot of entitlement from family members who feel like uh because I have a successful family member then I can just be asking them for any and everything and they have to give it to me and if they don't I can feel some type of way no they work for it now if they want to give it to you that's great but if they are sick of having to give it to you eventually that person's going to learn to have to say no Rashida like you're going to have to learn to say no because you can't just keep give, 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 giving to everybody, not realizing that you still have to put more back into yourself, your business, and your, like, immediate, like, family. Like, you just can't keep giving. We also find out that Rashida's nieces um called, asked for some money, called her back after she sent the money, talking about the money order got lost, stolen, whatever it was. And um, from what I'm getting, she didn't say this, but I'm inferring that Rashida probably sent them more money to cover the money that was lost. And the next time she saw anything or heard anything about this old money order money situation was the nieces flexing on the gram like the money wasn't lost. And Rashida was like, y'all could at least call me and told me that y'all found the money order or something i felt like i was being lied to on top of that they don't really show up for holidays so it's just basically like you want me to help you but you can't show up for family events so they decide they're gonna try to work on that because kirk being the voice of reason for the first time basically was like i don't have a mama to talk to y'all mama is here y'all family is here y'all need to get it together and be able to talk and be around each other and that's the truth like even if you're not gonna be able to work it out with your family members and y'all have a falling out at least make peace with them so that's not weighing heavy on you and that does not fuck you up in the end if god forbid they do pass and y'all never made amends with each other y'all never made peace with each other because there's a lot of things like my daddy dead and gone okay buried six feet under the conversations that me and him should have had like really should have had we can't have those conversations now and the only way for me to try to fix that is for me to go to like therapy for those issues so yeah y'all need to work it out get it together and Rashida learn to say no because stop giving them everything they want they are grown adults you gotta work okay Learn to say no. Uh, moving on to Safari. You know, he back from New York. He back from talking with his mama and everything. And, you know, him and Erica take Sapphire out for a uh, family day or whatever. And, you know, Erica and Safari kind of talk. And he's like, my mama said, in the confessionals, he was like, my mama said I need to treat Erica like an empress. And I need to treat her better than I've ever treated her before. And I'm going to try to do that. And it's like, we were hoping you would try to do that. But from what we see in real time, that's not what happened. And then he also said, my mama said, we need to stay off social media. No, your mama said, you need to stay off social media. But you're just throwing Erica in there because you want her to feel like your mama said so. Now, um, I'm looking at my notes. Erica says Safari isn't... Okay, so Erica says Safari isn't the same man she married. But I'm like, yeah, I don't know a lot about marriage because I have not been married, but... From what Safari and Erica's mom, not Erica's mom, but Safari's mom and Erica talk about later in the episode when, uh, like, Safari's mom comes to visit them in Atlanta to not only see Erica and, you know, the new bundle of joy that is currently in Erica's womb, you know, getting all the nutrients that needs to be a happy and healthy child when born, to also see Sapphire because she hasn't seen her in 10 months. They talk about how safari has the habit of when things get too serious and when things get too real he shuts down mentally and emotionally starts to make a joke out of everything and starts to act ass and a fool and he's always been a clown so this is nothing new and i'm like well he needs to go to therapy so he can learn better skills like he need his own therapy Erica need her own therapy because she has her own issues with her mama because Erica's mama is in like a depression from what Erica said but it also goes along with the lines that Erica is financially supporting her mother but her mother didn't show up to her in Safari's wedding and she also was not there for the birth of the first two children so that is Erica's oldest son and Sapphire so 
both these individuals have their own issues and both of them need like you know separate therapy to work on themselves and then they need couples therapy that's what i have to say about this situation because while we hoped that from what safari's mom was saying and you know as a viewer who if i hadn't been paying attention to what was going on because they were in the blogs almost every single day and eric was just in the blogs today i would have hoped that yeah they could have worked out because they really seemed like they were in love with each other but Erica posted today, uh, she's 33, and she would never do this shit again. And I'm like, okay, okay, we see you, ma'am. So, I was like, they didn't really work out in real time, because in real time, we saw that shit played out. It was not great. It was terrible. Who am I going to next? Okay, so Yandy is doing a new photo shoot for her, uh, business skincare line. Didn't know she had a skincare line. Good for you, Yandy, getting the bags. Um, how do I feel about Yandy and Mendeecees and all they chill, chillin' moving down to Atlanta? I feel like I want them to go back to New York. Okay, that was the show. I need you to go back to New York because most of the transplants have taken over Love & Hip Hop Atlanta and it's not the same ratchet reality TV that we loved so much. Like, I watch reality TV to escape from life. This is not serious for me because that's not my life, but... Hell, it's like, I don't need the fighting or the drink throwing. I just need somebody just to be a little bit messy. And currently, I don't really care about the air kicking on. Y'all gonna hear it anyway. I need somebody just to be a little bit messy. And currently, ain't nobody being a little bit messy because everything is about family and trying to work on ourselves and just like real life. Like, this shit is terrible. And I'm gonna just say this now. COVID did a number on everybody. Y'all relationships, it just really forced y'all to be together and show y'all <laughs> yeah, i don't really like this person a lot or this person doesn't do as much as they could or i take on more of the responsibility for the kids and the house and the bills and the businesses and different stuff like that so it's really showing y'all like did i rush into marriage is this what i want basically because that's what i see for the preview for the next episode but anyway Tight Teeth and Yandy talk about if uh, Infinity can stay with them, you know, for a longer time, you know, her living in the house. And, you know, they're talking about, no, they don't really want her staying in the house just based off of her going to social media. And like I said, and I forgot what review I said this about, when you have a teenager who has abandonment issues and never has had a real way of like truly communicating openly and honestly in a way that gets across to the adults in her life and the adults in her life you and Mendeecees are on social media uh promoting businesses in the versus battle of uh, Instagram live when they go live and y'all are on there and y'all doing different things the way for her to reach y'all for y'all to actually hear that pain that she is feeling and she is going through was to go to social media and that's what most teenagers do they tend to air out their feelings because that's what's going to get you to take notice and actually pay attention to what's going on and possibly to hear and understand what they are currently feeling now her saying she gonna write a tell-all book i'm like infinity girl you only 19 how you gonna write a tell-all i don't think you have enough to tell all but okay um so tight teeth and yandy decide to you know get infinity a apartment and they're gonna pay for the apartment for two months but then at like in that two months she needs to find a job because she's going to be paying for said apartment and paying for the bills in the apartment i'm like so y'all want to kick her out the house a 19 year old she's still a teenager you want to kick her out the house um to put her in an apartment to force her to get a job she's a college student at that and basically forcing all this responsibility on her that she does not seem ready for whatsoever to force her to become an adult in your eyes just because y'all mamas and daddies did that to y'all does not mean you need to do that however i have a feeling that they wouldn't do this to their own kids i mean they biological children but i'll just leave that alone so they get on the boat for carly's birthday party but we don't get to that in the carly section of this whole thing and you know yandy is talking to sierra and uh kendrick that's her that's 
that's that lady named Ke Miss Kendra. And uh, she's talking to them about the whole infinity situation and how she wants her peace and she doesn't want to seem like a bad person, but is she bad for wanting her peace and wanting her out of the house? And Sierra was like, yes. And Sierra was like, you have to love on her and you have to keep her tight to the vest because she has abandonment issues and she's projecting and that projection that she's having, you know, it might cause some, you know, conflict, okay? It might cause some things, but Yandy, you knew what you were signing up for. Her mother, her biological mother told you. Her social workers or social worker should have told you. If y'all say she's in therapy now, then she's trying to work on herself. But you knew what you were signing up for. for but for you to want to throw her out. To force her to become an adult. Knowing that she has these abandonment issues. It's just like, come on now. Like, she's a teenager. Who, as a teenager, like, I'm 22. I really don't count 22 as my age because I turned 22 in a uh, pandemic. So, technically speaking, I say I'm 21. But, you know, legally, I'm 22. As a 22-year-old, I am still working on getting control of all of my emotions and trying to properly channel those and then how to express those to other people. But at 19, I didn't have that much control. And they're like, Infinity, I have slight abandonment issues. Now, what my mama, it was my daddy, but that's a whole nother story for another day. And it probably won't even be on this channel. It'll be on the backup channel. Oh, yeah. I have a backup channel. It's called the RWR Way. Y'all go follow me. So, Yandy and Spice talk about tight teeth saying that if Yandy had um, gone to prison, he didn't know if he would be able to hold her down, which was some BS and yandy feel like it was some stupid ish and uh, spice feel like it's some stupid ish and we the public feel like it was some stupid ish because the girl held you down while you were in prison not once but twice and probably some more times that we don't know about she held you down she basically while trying not to put her life on hold for you had to hold everything down from the kids to the businesses to the houses and to dealing with the baby mamas but we all know how that situation worked out to dealing with your mama who was constantly calling you and telling you that yandy over here rubbing people down the lotion yandy over here rubbing people down with baby oil yandy doing this and yandy doing that and yandy's out here taking pictures yandy did ah uh, blah 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 but yandy 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 it was some bs she held you down what more do you want from this woman the guys tell uh, Tai Chi, you know, you was wrong for that, okay? You're wrong. Just wrong. And then Tai Chi say, well, they've gotten over it. And Yandy was like, it's still some BS. So then we get to later in the episode where Yandy sees, aka Tai Chi and Yandy go and talk to Affinity about, you know, basically kicking her out and putting her in an apartment that they'll, they'll pay for for two months. But before they, you know, have that conversation about you know giving her all the heat ho out the door out the house because you know they don't really trust her and it takes a while to build up trust and they also feel like she needs to be an adult and having her out the house will give them peace again affinity who's been to therapy and who is working on herself and understands what she did wrong apologizes she wholeheartedly like just bears her heart out on her sleeve and apologizes to them and then they drop the bomb on Miss Girl. They tell her that what they're going to do is they're going to put her in an apartment. They're going to pay for everything for two months. And in that time, she needs to find a job because she can't stay here because she's not contributing to anything. She's not paying no bills. She's not helping out. So we're going to get you an apartment. That way you can grow into being the adult you're supposed to be. And homegirl lost it. Mind you, when she's going off about like, is she... <laughs> Like, she does not want to do that. She wants to be with her family. You know, the family unit that Yandy promised her when she became a, her foster mother. She doesn't want to live on her own. She's not ready to live on her own. Her abandonment issues and the different things she's going on that have gone on in her life will not allow her to, you know, comfortably and be in the right mental state to live on her own as she's expressing all these things you know 
tight teeth get up and leave and she basically breaks it down to Yandy like I don't need y'all to pay for anything I don't want y'all to pay for anything I have a savings what I want is for y'all to show up I want y'all to show up and be my family like you promised I want you to love me and care for me and be okay with me and understand that I am a teenager and I make mistakes because that's what she did she made a mistake she's a teenager what do you want her to do or are you forgetting how you were as a teenager she doesn't want to be thrown to the wolves and basically forced to grow up. Why? Because she's had to be grown her entire life. Even though she's eventually going to have to be a grown adult, she does not want to be grown. Because in the time that she was with her mother and with her grandmother and in the foster care system, she had to be the adult. And now that she is with the people she considers family, and the fact that you promised her that you wouldn't have to be the adult, that this is going to be family, we're going to take care of you, you are our child. And I was just basically like, oh, well, I want my peace and I can't really trust you after everything. And even though, like, I accepted your apology and I love that you apologized again. Um, yeah, you have to go. What the fuck? And she ends up boohoo crying. And the producer is like, uh, isn't this what's going to help you move to Atlanta? And she's like, that's not what I wanted. I just need my family to show up for me, to love me, to care for me. And like, I'm not about to repeat everything I said before. I'm like, I'm, ooh, I'm done. Can we send them back to uh, New York, please? Hell, you don't want to say Kim Bella was right, but it's looking like Kim Bella was right. Child, so we get to Carly. Now, Lamar and Carly, we all saw this play out on social media. So we know none of this worked out. But Lamar hosted a boat party for her carly's birthday party is on a boat it's on lake lanier and all i got to say is now if y'all haven't seen the short that i made and i told you motherfuckers to stay off lake lanier do you know what happens on lake lanier you don't come back i know to keep my black ass off of lake lanier and i don't even live in georgia i don't live in atlanta i don't plan on going on lake lanier and if anybody invites me to lake lanier i'm not going keep y'all asses off lake lanier so they on the boat and everything and you know, Carly and her daughter, after, like, the whole family reunion thing they did, you know, fan band reunion, as I like to call it, Carly's daughter was like, I want to spend more time with my mother. Like, you know, my grandmother raised me, but I need to spend more time with my mother, so now they're spending more time together. Um, even though Spice and Carly is friends, Spice feel like Carly threw the party for herself, and I was like, she might have. Also, Spice feels like after everything Carly went through with, sorry, Arkansas Mo, that she doesn't understand why she just wants to jump straight into a relationship. And she wants to ask Carly, why does Carly need a man to validate her? And Miss Spice, I don't know if it's that she needs a man to validate her. It's more on the lines that Carly needs a storyline, okay? I mean, Carly could have went with the whole daughter and continued that storyline and dove deep into the daughter's daddy because we find out later that the reason why Carly's daughter had to live with her mother for most of her life is because when Carly and Jasmine's daddy was married and was living in uh, L.A., the daddy, you know, took off, basically abandoned them and was sent to prison due to feds you know, for money laundering or whatever. And when they couldn't find him in the time he took off, they started going at Carly and eventually basically just snatched up all they stuff. And her mother came to help her out. And eventually Carly's mother told her, for in order for you to get back on your feet and not to have to worry about your daughter having like a place to lay her head, food, clothes, shelter, all that, she can come stay with me. So that's what we find out as to why it was kind of like a sort of disconnect between Carly and her daughter because all this happened. Then we find out that while the ex-husband, which is the father of Jasmine, he did go to prison. When he got out of prison, he made no efforts to, you know, go see his daughter, which should have been his first priority seeing as you basically just like up and left her and threw her whole life into a disarray due to the bullshit that you were doing and jasmine don't want to have a relationship with him and i was like i get it but even though i don't like agreeing with kirk um and i know what it's like to lose a father and to go through the you know your father going to prison and all that stuff 
you need to go and have a conversation with that man not for him but for yourself so you can get some type of closure and so you don't have to feel any type of way and be flipped up in this world god forbid that man passes away so miss jasmine i need you to go have a conversation with him i know you don't want to but you gotta have you're gonna need to go have a conversation with him so you can be done with it be over with it and go live your best motherfucking life okay being the bad b that you are now uh jasmine also apologized later in the episode for not being there for carly when she was going through all that stuff with arkansas mo because carly was reaching out to her and she wasn't really reaching back out to carly and you know they apologize, they hug it out, boom, family, we good. Then we also see, um, during the party, you know, Jasmine pull Lamar to the side and they have a conversation about, you like, what's going on with you and my mama? Where is this going? He's like, we're just taking it slow, trying to keep it very conservative. We were both not in the best relationships previously, so we're just trying to take it slow and jasmine feel like he's a good guy but i was like miss jasmine i already seen how this plays out he plays your mama like she was a soybean burger bitch in these streets shout out to bondi blue and lisa left eye lopez from uh you know house party because he really did try to play carly out like she was nothing like she was not a zilch gum at the bottom of his shoes the black sticky shit at the bottom of the barrel mm -hmm. shout out to the brothers um that's what he tried to do to carly and i'm like who we gonna see this See this play out. Can't wait for this reunion. But I feel like I missed the messy a little bit. Like, y'all couldn't have kept, like, Mimi. Y'all couldn't bring Jessica Dime back. Y'all need to bring, like, certain people back. Because it it has to be a balance between messy and serious. And let me just check the notes. Make sure I got everything for y'all. Because I don't want to have to come back and do this. Okay, I got everything. Now, if you like the review, please like comment subscribe turn your post notifications on and you know share me with your people and if you didn't please like comment subscribe turn your post notifications on and you know share me with your people because you may not like me but somebody out there does now what you also need to do if you want to get in contact with me for any reason any reason you want to buy a lip gloss or you want to book a photo shoot sh photo shoot because you're in the kansas city area all that is in the description box below and i will be coming at y'all with some new content and friday i have a video premiering it's the Y'all liked it, so I tried it series, and I'll be coming back for more stuff with that. And I'll see y'all next week for this. Also, Love and Hip Hop Miami is coming back, and I will be reviewing it. So I'll see y'all later. Okay, bye.